You are listening to Productivity Straight Talk with your host, Amber De La Garza. Amber is a sought-after productivity coach, trainer, speaker, and writer who gives entrepreneurs the straight talk on personal productivity. No BS, fluff, or overused jargon. Just actionable strategies to get results and succeed in business. And here is your host, Amber De La Garza, the productivity specialist. Welcome and thank you for listening to Productivity Straight Talk. Today is episode 74, the biggest productivity killer no one talks about with Jacqueline Malone. If you are an entrepreneur who wants actionable solutions to maximize profits, reduce stress, and make time for what matters most, then you're in the right place and I'm so glad you've joined me. I am really looking forward to today's episode because you get to meet our guest Jacqueline Malone. Jacqueline is a marketing and mindset coach, speaker, and co-host of All Up In Your Lady Business Podcast. She helps female entrepreneurs become the go-to gal in their space from the inside out. Now, you'll hear a little bit of this when we jump into the interview, but I really could not wait to have Jacqueline on. I had met her through a mutual friend that made the introduction, and then her and I actually got to meet each other in person at Podcast Movement over the summer. And I know for me, it was really an amazing connection, and I really, really hit it off with her. She's super successful, has great advice, and I couldn't wait to have her on to share some wisdom them with you. When listening in on my conversation with Jacqueline, you will discover the productivity crippling mantra you're unintentionally telling yourself, ways to shut your inner mean entrepreneur up, how to rewrite your thoughts so they lift you up instead of drag you down, the dangers of imposter syndrome, one of the most powerful things you can do to improve your productivity, and so much more. So let's dive right in and meet Jacqueline. Welcome to the show, Jacqueline. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. So we actually had to like literally pause the laughing to start the recording because we're already having such a great time. I am really looking forward to our listeners learning from you and just listening in on our conversation. But before we jump into today's topic, can you share with us a little bit about yourself, who you serve and what you're up to? Sure. So I am Jacqueline Malone. I'm a marketing and mindset coach, and I help entrepreneurs become the go-to gal in their space, as I like to say, from the inside out. So I combine both the marketing strategy to get known with the mindset to actually put yourself out there and be vulnerable to get known. And the two go hand in hand. My background is in marketing, but through this whole entrepreneurial journey, it's been such a mindset journey for me. And I found that when I brought my clients in on that and started opening up those conversations, sharing my own experiences and really getting vulnerable with theirs, I joke that's when they actually started implementing what I told them to do. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Okay. So this is so great. And that shouldn't have been my first aha for the episode because I've known you for a little while and I actually knew that that was your title, marketing and mindset coach. However, before you even said the two go hand in hand, I'm like, uh, duh, yes, because half of the battle is having that confidence and feeling you're where you need to be to go ask for the business and shout it out from the rooftops and all those things. So I could imagine because ironically, I've done a pivot in my business recently and talked a lot about mindset. And that's why I have you on today. Because I feel like productivity and mindset go hand in hand. Oh, for sure. Because we can have all the right strategies and tips like in marketing and yet sabotage ourselves because we don't have the mindset around it. Yes. Yeah. Oh God, now I just want to dive in. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm super excited. So literally that's how you and I are like married onto this episode is because I've been having this recent love affair, probably wrong word, with mindset. Jacqueline, you wrote an article in Entrepreneur Magazine, the biggest productivity killer for women that no one talks about. Now, before we jump in, men, you listen up too because this is 100% for you too. And Jacqueline and I talked off air to make sure that this was just as relevant for you. Can I share the behind the scenes of this? Totally. Let's get some inside scoop. All right. So 
entrepreneur wanted this to be for women specifically. And I work with mainly women. My main program is called Go To Gal. <laughs> I talk about your inner mean girl. But right along with these things, you could substitute guy and it totally fits. But with this article, entrepreneur wanted it to be written specifically to women. And they also like to have data and facts to back things up. I'm used to just speaking my mind. I'm a podcaster. I say what I want. <laughs> Nobody questions me. There's no like little asterisks at the bottom of our podcast. Podcast that's like, oh, like, and where did like, you get that information? Yeah, back we're when? not citing sources. <laughs> so I'm like, what? Like, I need facts to write this article. I can't just say what I, my experience and what my thoughts are. So I did, I had to do research to say, like, why is this the biggest thing for women specifically? I'm going to tell you, I actually had a really hard time proving that. So luckily, they were not super strict. I cited an article from 1978. <laughs> Wow. And, and I wasn't able to find much else to back it up that it was for women specifically. We went with it anyway. And everything in this article in my heart stands for both men and women. It's really just marketed to women. I just wanted to share a little bit of behind the scenes of like how this stuff works because that was such a big like, oh, I need to like back this stuff up. Yes. It definitely applies to men as well. Okay. So the big topic, if you didn't hear it from the title, wherever I entered it, we're talking about imposter syndrome. Feeling like, well, we're an imposter. And I'm sure that does show up a bit differently for men or women. But I think it's a very real thing for entrepreneurs. There lies the big mindset issue is that if you feel like you're an imposter, how do you go out and tell the world about yourself and market and grow your business? And how do you do the work in your business when you're kind of self-sabotaging if you don't feel like you deserve it? Absolutely. How do you take these big leaps of faith and put yourself out there in bigger ways when you're getting in your head with self-doubt and comparing yourself to others, comparisonitis and all of these things. And a lot of times, even for me, so this was my second article with Entrepreneur. And even for me, my first article was very successful with them. It had over a thousand shares. Is this going to be as good as the first one? Mm, <laughs> right. You know, And so we get into our head about stuff like this. And while you can quiet that voice over time, what I find is it pops up all the freaking time. <laughs> and yeah. it's more about what I do with it when it happens than trying to like pretend like it doesn't happen. I actually really love... And I'll say it's my perspective because I think I've attracted and surrounded myself around entrepreneurs lately, but are really having this conversation a lot because I can tell you it was a very recent time in my business that I thought I was the only one that felt this way, right? That's not something you just go to coffee and talk to anyone about to say, Oh my gosh, I got this keynote and I don't know, maybe I wasn't the right pick or Oh, I have this X thing that I want to create, but will anybody buy it? Or I want to launch a podcast. Will anyone know actually how many downloads do I get? Those are all these conversations that go through our head, but we don't always have the blessing to have these close people in our lives that are open about that to say, I have those same conversations too, but this is what I do. This is how I push yes. through. And I'm so glad you brought that up about your keynote because... And that's why I wanted to use the example about entrepreneur too, because a lot of people think that this is something that's like when you're early on in your business, mm. but... New level, new new devil. It's, you know, as we keep yes. pushing ourselves and growing and expanding, our brain is like, whoa, like what is going on? And and hasn't caught up with how amazing we are yet, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of feel like being addicted to that feeling, it's not a great feeling, but I know if I've gone a long time without feeling that way, that means I haven't pushed myself. Yes. Right. That means I've stayed comfortable, that I haven't tried something new and gotten out of my box recently enough. I'm not talking much time has to go by before I'm asking, well, what's new? What's big? What's going to challenge me? So I think I've really grown to befriend that feeling and know that there's something big on the other side of it versus being at odds with it all the time. Your line is to shut the inner mean girl out. What is it? What is it? To shut shut up the mean, mean girl? <laughs> I have shut that said bitch that up. before. Okay. So I'll just put it in my own words. Shut that bitch up. There you go. So do you have any advice for us about when these voices come up? How do you shut them down? They always sound so much bigger and heavier. 
in your head. So getting it out of your head and onto paper, one, makes you conscious. Mm. Two, makes you see it on paper and immediately it's going to feel like this weight lifted because it's going to look a lot smaller or not real or silly on paper than it feels in your head when you're not saying it. Mm -hmm. And very scientifically, (laughs) when it's in our head, we're not thinking logically. But the minute that we take it out of our head and write it on paper, we're now able to use the logical part of our brain to say like, is that really a thing? Yeah. Is that really a thing? And is it is, how big of a deal is it? And if it is a big deal, are we going to let it get in the way of achieving this or that? And actually start to have a logical conversation with ourselves about these thoughts that are bringing us down, right? Or making us second guess ourselves or really like raining on our parade. Yes. So I've been moved to share a story with you. I shared it on Facebook, but Facebook didn't love it. So not a lot of people saw it. So I'll just share it here on my own podcast. (laughs) I was scrolling Facebook and there was this video of this guy that was talking about how he was never the smart guy in school. He was tried ditching school. He even dropped out. He had dyslexia and some learning disabilities. He was talking about how he got a scholarship for soccer. And so he thought he was a jaw. He went around and he went to the English college and he was in love with what was possible with English literature. And he went to an advisor and he told him what he wanted to do. And he's like, yeah, no, not. I'm looking at your records. Like there's no way pretty much. So the guy went back to his English teacher. I'm totally hacking the story. You guys got to watch the video. The guy really empowered him to call the guy out. Prove it. Tell him that, that he doesn't know what he's talking about. And the only way to do that is to make it happen. So he signed up for four English literature courses and all this other stuff. And he goes, and now I can tell you that that guidance counselor has two autographed books of mine on his desk that I have mailed to him, right? It was this full circle thing. But for me, it really hit home because I never felt smart in school. Ever. So I am not traditionally the smart girl that can spell really well now or then. (laughs) Grammar is not my best thing. You would think, okay, math. She's got to be a math nerd. Nope, not that. And I remember going through high school and thinking, okay, so maybe it's dance. Nope, don't have rhythm to save my life. Maybe it's art. (laughs) Nope, not that. Going through my high school years and like just trying to figure out, what am I good at? Where do I stand out? My now husband, but boyfriend then, he was just smart. He didn't study for tests. Everything he needed was folded up in his back pocket in one pencil. Like I remember just thinking, damn, like he's so easy for him. I wrote this post just sharing that I had to find my strengths. And it wasn't until I got out of college that I started leaning into my strengths. And once I started leaning into my strengths and I found productivity, entrepreneurism, podcasting and speaking and all the things that I do now because I've leaned into them, I have found that I feel like I'm really smart just in different ways that school never, ever appreciated. Then I lean on building a team. So nothing I write except for that unedited and heartfelt post is edited by someone that knows grammar and English and words so much more than me. I don't need to be the person that spells everything perfectly. I need to surround myself with people that complement my weaknesses so that I can stand out in my strengths. And the reason I'm sharing this is because there's probably a lot of people listening like, I don't think I can do it or that's not for me. And if I would have listened to myself or I wouldn't have just kept searching for the thing that lit me up, I would never be here today. That imposter syndrome doesn't go away. Of course, I send an email out and there's a mixed spelling or I jump on social media because I got something to say and I'm like, oh, what an idiot when I reread it, right? And I swear I edit it five times before I hit publish and it's still not right. <laughs> So those are me. That's like really what I am. But I do know that I help my clients. And so as long as I stay focused on the way that I can help my clients and how my business serves, I shut that inner mean girl up. And she shows up all the time. And one of the things that I said is that I stacked small wins upon small wins. And in the rearview mirror, small wins stacked upon small wins look like big wins. And that's really how I built my business is just leaning in and finding the things that I liked, that I succeeded at, and just kept stacking them up until next thing I knew, I'm keynoting to thousands of people or I'm on a podcast or I have a business. But that didn't happen overnight. I really had to shut it up by proving her wrong. Yes. Oh, this is so powerful. (laughs) And I love that you shared this story. 
Oh, and yes, I think we can all relate to so much of that. And I joke about it on my about page and stuff, but I don't see typos. And so I think I say something creative like, well, I can see like opportunities. (laughs) I literally can't spot a typo. (laughs) That is so great. I never read your about page, but I should probably steal some of that because my husband was like, I think you totally missed third grade because my son's in third grade and we're like learning all the basics. And I was like literally doing homework with them like, oh, this is a great refresher. Like, (laughs) So yeah, it all looks right to me. So like those little images where letters are missing and they ask you if you could read this. Oh, I can read it because that's how my regular spelling looks like. But anyways, so we totally sidetracked. It was a good opportunity for my audience to hear, but to know that those feelings, no matter how successful, when you're comparing like your bruised apples because you know your story to their shiny oranges that are like up on a pedestal because you put them there, like the comparison thing, like you'll never know their story. I know that some of you have listened for over a year on Productivity Straight Talk and probably never knew that about me. And if I hadn't shared it, you still wouldn't know. I really, really am inviting you guys, don't compare yourselves to their outside shiny orange that you've put on a pedestal to your true story that might feel like a bumped up, bruised up apple. So since you brought it up, I want to go there because this is a big mindset thing. Anything we're putting on a pedestal is out of reach. So whether that is a person, an opportunity, a lifestyle, if we're holding something up on a pedestal, it means it's out of reach for us. So we are all humans. We are all equal. If you're seeing something in someone else, it just means that it's available for you and kind of opening your mind up to that and not saying like, oh, I could never, especially with podcasters, right? Like we have this, we're in your earbuds right now. Like it's easy to, and especially if they don't see your face, like it's almost like, oh, like they're talking to us from the elusive app. And it can be easy to put someone that you don't really know or that you admire up on a pedestal, but it's so important to take those stories and resonate and say, you know what? I could admire someone while still thinking of them as my equal and as my peer and not holding them to this higher standard that is unachievable for me. Absolutely. I don't know about you, Jacqueline, but when I go to conferences and stuff and someone approaches me as my equal and we may not even be in the same place in our business, I want to help them and they can help me. Things that they're up to and things that I'm up to can complement each other. But as soon as someone were to walk up to me and just talk to me like I'm somewhere on a pedestal or something, like that's uncomfortable for me too. Like, no, 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 no. I'm just a normal person too, right? And so just so that it makes everybody comfortable out there listening, just treat people like people. Absolutely. So Jacqueline, what have been some of the obstacles you've seen your clients have to overcome with regards to mindset? What are some common mindset issues or stumbling blocks that you see a lot? Well, I want to keep this around productivity as much as possible because I know the two go hand in hand too. And I I think it'd be such a good conversation for us to have. And one of the mantras that I hear people say the most, here's the thing though, they don't realize it's a mantra. So people that I'm telling like, oh, I want you to start saying affirmations or mantras. And they're like, oh, I don't do that. Reality check. You're definitely already doing this. Right. Just not intentionally. You are already telling yourself things over and over and over again every single day. You're just not being intentional about it. So capturing those thoughts and rewriting them so that they're lifting us up instead of dragging us down is one of the most powerful things we can do. And around time and productivity, one of the things I hear the most is, I don't have enough time. Yes. And it is like legit the biggest mantra ever where we like start our days thinking, I don't have enough time. And all day long, you're like, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. And literally you don't realize it, but you're making it your mantra is I don't have enough time. So how surprised can we be when you never have enough time? Sing it, girl. Okay, literally, I've had a client that I made her write little check marks on her desk, like a notebook. Every time she thought to herself, she didn't have enough time. (laughs) <laughs> was it just covered? <laughs> right? So like, this is literally your relationship with time. Like you're literally yes. affirming and telling yourself you don't have enough time. Therefore, you act as if you don't have enough time. So one of my affirmations that I say daily to combat that is that I always have time for what matters most. 
And so what it does is put responsibility on me to properly prioritize and really know what matters most. You know, we've heard all those sayings and whatever, you don't have time for everything, but you do have time for the things that matter. And that's kind of where that came from is you're right. Nobody has time to do everything. So why don't you lean into that? So you say you don't have enough time, but when you approach your work, you act like you have all the time in the world because you don't prioritize shit, right? So why don't you say, you're right, I don't have time for everything. That's a good thing because now I get to choose by priority of what I'm going to focus my time and energy on. I love that it, one, puts the focus back on the prioritizing and it's believable. So if we were just to flip that around and have you start saying, I have all the time in the world... (laughs) every day. You don't believe that, right? And it's also not true. I'm sure you are saying you don't have enough time because you have a lot going on, right? Right. So to just flip it around and say the opposite, when you don't believe it, you're creating this friction and resistance in your head. And you know, our brains are pretty smart. Your brain's like, "Uh, that's not true. Like you're not fooling me. (laughs) And it doesn't accomplish anything because it's about the belief. It's about the feeling. So when you flip it around like you did and say, I I believe I have enough time for what matters most to me, right? Then one, you're refocusing on, okay, what matters most to me, but you're also creating that belief that is true and you get into that feeling. And that's where the magic happens with mindset is when you're feeling it and not just saying it. Yes. So I love the way that you framed that of you didn't just flip it around because you literally reset it and laughed at yourself. And I'm laughing over here too. Like you can't even flip that and say, I have all the time in the world. And then wholeheartedly like swallow that, right? (laughs) There's no way you could swallow that. And so, yes, I love that. Finding affirmations that feel true to you, that are on the positive. Sometimes my affirmations are things that I'm still working on, right? So for our listeners, my son does affirmations every day and I do affirmations as well. And for those of you that haven't heard it, he's on episode nine. He's my expert guest where I talk to him about affirmations. There's times in the car that he'll say, yeah, mommy, that's like one you're still working on, right? (laughs) Because I think... (laughs) So like one of mine is that I'm a patient, fun-loving mom every day. And so the patient part is probably what he's questioning. And he's like, yeah, mommy, you're still working on that one. And yeah, I'm working on that some days harder than others. But I'm going to affirm that I start each day with a mindset around being a patient, fun-loving mom. So that means that the affirmation doesn't need to be exactly true for you 100% of the time. But I use it as a placeholder to set my mind and my intention for each and every day. And you know you're capable of that. It's different than saying... And some coaches will tell you this. I just find that it doesn't work for me. Like look in the mirror and say, I am a millionaire, you know? And like, if I'm not a millionaire, I'm not like, I'm going to be like, all right, Jacqueline, like you've gone a little crazy, you know? When it's something that like we know isn't true, but you know that you can be a patient mom. It's just remembering that in those moments. Yes. <laughs> to come back to that, it's really about setting the intentions. That's why I think it works so well for you. That's so, so great. So I wanted to circle back to something that I utilize as internal talk to shut down my inner mean girl as well. And I do this with clients and things come up of like, I'm not capable, I'm not good enough or whatever the things are. And I always say, ask, is that true? Whatever the statement is that's going on in your head, ask, is it true? Because I think like you were referring to affirmations, a lot of coaches and people just say, shut it up. But if that shit's true, how do you shut it up? So the first question I ask is, is it true? If it's no, then shut it up. Like there's no room for it. There's no reality to it. You're playing head games with yourself. But if there's any truth to it, then it's uncovered an opportunity to learn or grow or to do something. So if you say, is it true that I don't have the bandwidth to bring on 10 new clients? Okay, right? So we won't go out and market ourselves because we truly don't feel like we have the bandwidth. So you can sit in that and act as though that's the truth and the whole truth. But if you ask, is it true? The next question would be, so what do you need to be able to handle 10 new clients? I need a part-time assistant for 20 hours a week. Okay, now you've created an actionable that you can go solve. And now that's no longer an excuse that's running through your head, stopping you from getting 10 new clients. So true. I just walk it back from, is it true? If it's true ask what's the underlying truth and is there an opportunity to solve it? Is it a skill set that you don't know? If you want to become a speaker, is it true you're a bad speaker? 
yeah, it's true you're a bad speaker. So now the opportunity is for you to go learn or get a coach or find resources that will make you become a better speaker. And that will shut that voice up. But if you just sit with it, it just keeps coming back over and over again. It's so true. I have a similar exercise. And the key thing I say to look for is the because, right? Okay. Because... So let's say in your example, they're like, Oh, I don't have time because, because I don't work full-time. Okay. Well, you don't work full-time. Is that... And you kind of take them down the path. The thing is, you're getting into like, what are the stories in your head that you're saying? These stories that are why you can't have what you want or why you can't do things a certain way. And in order to get to that actionable step that I love you put there, you have to separate the fact from the fiction. And that because (laughs) are, are your beliefs. And a lot of times your beliefs are not facts and they feel like facts. Don't they? Well, when you keep them in your head, so now we're going full circle into your initial recommendation is getting them out of your head because they sound so believable. But even on paper, a lot of times, our beliefs are so ingrained in us. I think that's why it's helpful for a client to go through with a coach, right? Or, or even with a friend if you don't have a coach. But to get that outsider perspective of, well, why is that? Or why don't you think you can have that thing because of that? To get to the root of it. Because a lot of times we hold beliefs so closely that we don't realize that you can even see it a different way. Yeah. One of the topics that I see come up a lot is like what people charge for their services or whatever it is in their business, however they're making money is that they have some sort of belief that they're, they don't have enough experience or they're not there yet or, or how could they possibly charge this amount of money? And then it's all really, really wrapped in a lot of mindset and beliefs around money, their own value, their perceived value in the marketplace. It's literally an onion that just kind of keeps getting unfolded. I have a quick example that might help too. That's just something I've, I remembered that came up with a client this past week. We we're talking about relationship building. And she's like, it sounds great, but I can't be building relationships. I only have one day a week to work. I have my kids home the rest of the time. And I have to use that time for work. I, there's no other... I think she's homeschooling. Like There's other situations where you know she can't get more childcare time. But in her business, networking is so important. The story was, I can't build relationships because I don't have enough time. Okay, well, what is this about this? You don't have enough time. And when we broke it down and started looking at it, I was like, well, could you be having coffee chats with your kids home? Like, I do that. I do a lot of my coffee chats while I'm driving around in the car with the kids or while my little one's playing or, or something like that. And she was like, you can do that. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> like you probably can't have your client calls with your kids home, but yeah, you can have a coffee chat with kids around. Like that's okay. She never knew that that possibility was even available, right? When it feels like a fact, you're not looking for other solutions. Right. Oh my gosh. I love that. So I was waiting to hear what the solution was. And I was like thinking it's got to have something to do with like bringing her kids or going to play dates <laughs> and talking business or like something where she's got to find the business, but with yeah, her kids. Because you already think outside the box. Exactly. For my son, like he grew up in my business. Like I think every single client knows him. And sometimes he's coming in like right here. Not all the time. We're on video for those of you that are listening, by the way. He may come in and he's just always been a part of my business. And because I had to figure it out. That's the key is that I had to figure it out. I had a big want to grow my business, but I also had this big desire to have him included into the business and the day-to-day and not have it so separated. It so inspiring. Okay, I have one more vulnerability story for myself. And this is actually funny because it has to do with Angie. And Angie's the one that introduced you and I together. Oh, hi, Angie. Exactly. And I know she's listening. So Angie, I hired to promote me on getting me on podcasts because I have a KPI in my business that I do four podcast interviews a month. So if you're listening and you think I'd be a great guest... Just reach out. But anyways, and so I hired her because I had already gone through like my sphere of influence and like the people I knew, and it became a lot more work to try and meet people that I didn't know. So I hired her because she was amazing. And she started pitching me to podcasts where I was like, no, 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 no. Can we do that like in month four? Like, I don't think I'm ready for that one. That's a big one. (laughs) This is like what's going on in my head. And I was like, are you kidding me? You're paying her to pitch you. She doesn't have that mindset crap in her head. She thinks you're great. Let her pitch you. (laughs) This is so good. 
So I've been like having this struggle, but what it did was actually let me in on some stuff that was going on in my head that I wasn't even aware of because had I obviously was governing who I was reaching out to because of a subconscious belief that I had to do this first and be this for whatever those beliefs were, she comes in and just hits the ground running, went for some really, really what I consider big podcast. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, go ahead. That's really what I said. And so it uncovered something I didn't know was there. That was a great strategy. So outsource the stuff in your business that you are literally sabotaging yourself on because of mindset crap. Oh, that's such a good hack. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And I didn't even know that that's why I really outsourced it. At first, it was a time thing, but it did uncover some other stuff. So I'm really, really glad that I did it because I'm going to hit my KPIs. All right, Jacqueline. So this has been an amazing conversation about mindset and sabotage and the imposter syndrome, feeling like because of those invoices, we feel like someone's going to find out about us. Essentially, that's what imposter syndrome is, just to tie this up. You're always feeling like someone's going to be let in on your little secret that this is not really real. You're not as good as they think that you are. Yeah. Well, that's because you're not listening to them. Like They're telling you. They think whatever you're doing is so great... And when people do that, what is the internal conversation you're having with yourself? Or can you just be quiet and hear it and receive it? Yes. I've been working on that one. I've been working on that one. Oh, everything I know about mindset is stuff that I've struggled with and have learned. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Oh, but I am so guilty of deflecting compliments. And I've had to really, over the last year, it's been a journey for me with this one of noticing to receive a compliment and not immediately try to minimize it. Because mm. there's always a way you can minimize something, right? Like, oh, it wasn't. And I still catch myself and I have to like reframe it and bite my tongue. I had my first TV appearance and I caught myself. I said this to two people. They were like, oh my God. And I was like, yeah, but it wasn't directly for my business. Like I was like, huh. done. I'm like... <laughs> Because I was talking about mindset, but I wasn't talking about mindset for business. I was talking about mindset for moms. So even here, I'm explaining it to you. But I want you to understand the context. So in my head, instead of saying like, thanks, it's something I've been like looking forward to or so excited for. This is a big milestone for me or whatever. Like Instead of just accepting the compliment or even noticing the milestone and being like, yes, thanks. I was immediately like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Yes. And I had to like catch that and be like, nope, we're not going there. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) Not going back to those old ways. And with women, I think it's just so common too of like, oh, I like your shirt. Oh my God, it's on sale. Oh Oh my gosh, that's exactly the example (laughs) I was going to share, Jack. Oh, is it? (laughs) But it's literally all we do, right? (laughs) So this is going to be a conversation between, I think, the difference between men and women. Because I have learned this through my husband. I'll be like, oh you're so hot. You're so good looking. And he'll say, I know. And he says it and means it and he's not being cocky. But what else is he supposed to say? He's like, yeah, I look good. And when he says, babe, you look hot. I'm like, I have no makeup on. I know. That's the point. I still think you're hot. And so the same thing is like, what's that self-talk? For me, I think it's a male thing. I could be totally wrong, guys. We'd love to hear in on this he's okay with just hearing it, that it just doesn't come off like, you know, I would never say, oh, what a bitch. That he really just owns it. And I was like, gosh, that is such a calm confidence. And how would that serve me in my business? He's been modeling that for me like our entire lives, right? So just like little stuff like that. Because at first when he used to say that, I was like, that is so weird. There's nothing wrong with that if he knows he's a good looking guy. Like, good. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. All right. So to bring this full circle and to close up today, I think that Jacqueline and I are both just big proponents of everyone reaching their goals and knowing that mindset sometimes gets in the way. And I think that speaking for you, you could correct me, is that mindset is not something we ever stop working on. What'd you say? New level, new devil. Yes. Every corner I turn, I feel like there's some room for growth and working through some stuff I didn't even know was there last year, right? For us. So we're both encouraging you all to work through that stuff and get through it and get out there and get visible and market yourself and do the work in your business and stop sabotaging yourself. All right, Jacqueline. So how can we find out more about you if we want to go look you up? Where do we find the article on the entrepreneur that started this whole conversation? 
You can go to allupinyourladybusiness.com forward slash imposter. That is my podcast. And it's also, if you go to that link, it'll take you exactly to the entrepreneur article and you can read through all of that. You can follow me on Instagram, just Jacqueline underscore Malone. But we actually put together, I have a new course platform, for lack of a better word, that's really cool. And we have a section that's just all of my best freebies. So instead of going and trying to like opt in to like a million different things and get my, you know, all my best marketing and mindset tips and freebies, you can just go to JacquelineMalone.com forward slash goodies. And we'll take you to our site where you'll just be able to put your email in once and get all the goodness in one place. That's a great idea. That sounds like a very efficient way to serve your audience. I might have to... It does. We should talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I should totally take that and uh, model that in my own business. And so if y'all missed that, Jacqueline is a podcaster. She has a podcast called All Up In Your Lady Business. So you need to go check her out if you want some marketing and mindset. And just she's hilarious. And she's got a partner that she co-hosts with. We have a lot of fun, Jessica and I, yes. Yeah, you do. All right, great. Well, Jacqueline, thank you so much for being here and just having this conversation with all of our listeners and just giving me the opportunity to get a little vulnerable because I don't know that these stories would have come out talking to myself in a microphone. So it was really, really great going a little deep today for everyone. It was. Well, what did you think of that interview with Jacqueline about imposter syndrome? Do you experience it? Have you experienced it? How do you get through it? How do you stop believing that you are an imposter? These are all conversations that I truly cannot wait to take offline and out from behind the mic and off of the podcast. And I would love to have these conversations with you inside my private Facebook community, Productivity Straight Talk. If you're not already a member, you can join us by going to productivitycommunity.com. Again, that's productivitycommunity.com. Or if you're a member, I can't wait for you to jump in and send me a comment. Let me know what this podcast episode has done for you, what it has brought up for you. And more importantly, what are you going to do now that maybe you're putting a name on the way that you feel for the first time? Because I remember hearing the words imposter syndrome not very long ago. And I think I even shared it in the interview. And if I didn't, it is definitely the time to share it now is that I was feeling those ways and didn't even know it. I really wasn't able to articulate that in different times of my life. I hope that this interview truly hit home for you and let you know that you are not alone and that you do not need to sit in the space of feeling like you are an imposter. I have loved having you listen to this episode of Productivity Straight Talk. I need to be straight with you. No change, no change. Without taking action, nothing will change for you or your business. So based on what you learned today... Based on what you heard Jacqueline and I talking about, what will you take action on? What is going to change for you as a result of listening to our conversation? Because just putting a name on the way you feel, I don't think is enough. And I know that Jacqueline and I shared many different ways that you could possibly push through or shut that inner mean entrepreneur up, that inner voice that is not nice to you. And so if one of those resonated with you, I would invite you to go take some action and implement that in your day-to-day life. If you find Productivity Straight Talk to be valuable and powerful and have impacted your business, I would like to hear about it. I would love for you to share a review on iTunes so that I can hear what Productivity Straight Talk has done for you, but also letting others know what Productivity Straight Talk is all about. Because I know that if I'm ready to pick up a new podcast, it comes from one of two ways. I'm either going to stumble upon it online and I'm going to read reviews, or someone referred me to the podcast. And I got to tell you, the latter has been how I've picked up so many new podcasts over the years. And so if you feel that Productivity Straight Talk can be valuable to a fellow entrepreneur, share an episode with them. Tell them about the podcast. I would be so grateful. 
Because honestly, this podcast here is to serve you, the entrepreneur who wants to maximize their profits, reduce stress, and make time for what matters most. And I don't know about you, but I meet a lot of entrepreneurs that are looking to do that every day. So be sure to share Productivity Straight Talk with them. I have a special thank you going out to Jeff Savilico, who recently said, Amber has a fresh honesty to her that makes her podcast very enjoyable to listen to. She obviously knows her subject very well and shares her knowledge in a raw, vulnerable, and authentic way I found very refreshing. Great value, highly recommended. Thank you so much, Jeff. That means the world to me. I do pour my heart into this so that, well, you, the listener, can actually have real change in your business. Well, that's my straight talk for you today. And until next time, have a productive week.